I don't understand why in horror stories people do these things. It's <laughs> don't follow the signs, don't veer off the road. Like, why do characters always do this? Whether it's like in a horror film or a book, just any horror genre, why do we veer off the road from the direction or why do we follow the creepy signs? Why do we do it? For some reason, they did it in this one for our second Goosebumps book, which is One Day at Horrorland. This is the Morris family, and they're going on a family vacation. They were supposed to go to the Zoo Garden theme park, which I don't really know what that is. I don't really describe it in the book. It sounds like maybe there are zoo animals there. Maybe there's some rides. It has like more of a tropical vibe, but they get lost and they're like in the desert. And we have, again, these parents are a bit better than the first Goosebumps book. They still kind of argue a lot. They feel bad though and they try to like quell their temper they try to hold back their temper a little bit more i also think this is like the best mom written so far and then we have lizzie and luke they're the brother and sister for this one and then we have clay which is luke's friend clay i'm sorry you should not be friends with luke and his family anymore after this because this was a traumatizing experience they end up i think there's like a tire issue and they're all upset and they're cranky and they're hangry and then they see a sign kind of like this one it doesn't say welcome but it says like horland follow this way and the monster's like moving, he appears animatronic. They decide, let's do it because we don't know where we're supposed to go. Oh, the parents left the map home, which is why they're arguing and they're trying not to. So they decide this is a great idea, let's go. So in my opinion, red flag number one, and then they go. And this is kind of like a spoiler, but I feel like it's really important to mention because after this, I don't understand why they still stay. Red flag number two, literally like moments after they get out of their car, it explodes. Yes, it explodes. They're like 20 or 30 feet away from the car and they just watch it go up in flames. <laughs> and there is like this, he kind of looks like this, but our size, not gigantic. And he's like the ticket holder and they're called horrors. And he says, yes, come inside. We have a phone for you. We'll take care of you. But he says it in like a really creepy sort of undertony voice, which next red flag. Parents are like, fine, we're going to go in. We're going to try to find a phone. We're going to figure this all out. And the kids are like, can we please like go on rides? Specifically the little brother, Luke, like he's kind of a pain in the butt. And I've also noticed that is besides the first book, because again, I've only read three so far in the making of these videos. And out of the three, two of them, he makes the girl characters, the older sisters, and they're always like the more calm. They have to stay really rational and keep it together. And then the brothers are always annoying and out of control and whiny and always trying to get their way. I don't know, it's really interesting. That's kind of like the stereotype that he writes for all these characters. So Lizzie's trying to keep everything together while she's watching Luke and Clay. And of course, Luke wants to go on like every single ride. But again, next red flag is there's like no one here. I will say though, the park is really cool. They have like these different sections set up that are very horror-esque. Again, I don't want to give that away because I think that takes away from like the experience of reading it. But some of the rides they go on are really creepy. And one specifically, cause it does say back here that they deal with like um, a house of mirrors. And that scene in the book was absolutely terrifying. If you have claustrophobia issues, it's gonna be really hard to read. I will say that when it comes to like the spooks, R.L. Stein does a really good with spooks. I feel like in all of his books so far, I'm going, no, no. <laughs> Absolutely not, don't do it, bad idea. So even though I am a grown adult and these are meant for middle grade, I'm still like, nope. Nope, not okay, not okay. So the House of Mirrors one was really creepy. And then if you watch my first Goosebumps video, I mentioned that R.L. Stein does a really good job of hinting. He leaves like breadcrumbs about how to defeat the monster. Doesn't do it in the first one when I feel like it kind of backpedals on this trend he's created. So maybe he realized he should do that after he wrote that book, I'm not really sure. After I noticed it in this book, I started paying attention then in the next story about like what was gonna be the thing. So this one was such a simple thing and you can easily overlook it. And it was also kind of cutesy and funny, but I feel like that because it was kind of cutesy and funny for the way to defeat like the monsters, it made it less scary because the things that the characters go through in this book, they're actually like pretty horrifying and traumatic. This book was definitely different than what I expected, which I think I'm okay with that. I was actually hoping Hoping more that the horrors, like the monsters in the theme park were more zombie-esque, but they're actually like monsters. And there's some fun tongue in cheek stuff that Arl Stein did with it. Overall, I really love this one. This is my second favorite one. What did I bookmark for you guys? This is the car thing. And I stared back in horror as our car burst apart, exploding into a million pieces. Again, such a red flag. Like, why did you stay? Oh, this is the house of mirror things. 
I think it, it was just me annoyed that they decided to do it. Oh, oh, this was interesting. One of the green whores goes up to Lizzie and he whispers, get away while you can. Please, I'm serious, get away while you can. That was also interesting that one of the whores did that. Oh, I was like, why? Okay, so after Lizzie has gone through like all these whores and they finally find their parents, everyone's like, let's eat lunch before we go. No, just leave. You can find food on the way home, it's fine. <laughs> Ah, this was another thing that I don't want to spoil, but again, it's another like claustrophobia thing. Again, R.L. Stein does some really, really good stuff. I think definitely read this one more than this one. Obviously, it's still creepy, but I like this one so much more. But if you in real life are stranded on the side of the road or lost, don't follow the creepy signs. Don't follow them. And if you do, first red flag, get out of there. More characters need to listen to this advice. <laughs> I will see you in the next Goosebumps movie, movie, Goosebumps video. <laughs> we got three more to go, guys. I hope you all love Halloween as much as I do. Let me know in the comments what spooky things you're watching for Halloween, any spooky books that you're reading. If you've done any spooky things, I went on two haunted tours in Edinburgh in their underground vaults, and one was in a graveyard. <gasps> It was so terrifying. It was everything I wanted for spookiness for Halloween. Please like this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to be a part of our bookish community. I hope you're having a spooktacular October. You guys probably can get that for every video. Goodbye. Okay,